Hi everyone, I'm Reading with Jack and today I'm here with my final video of the year which is my December wrap up and January to be read pile. In December I read a total of five books which really shocked me actually. I didn't expect to be reading that many this month, particularly because in the first half of the month I didn't really read anything. I was preparing so much for my university interviews that I didn't really have the time. But in the second half of the month it was crazy and I read loads and I'm so happy about that. So let's get going and let's talk about these books. The first book that I read in December was A Monster Cause by Patrick Ness and I gave this a 4 out of 5. This is a book basically about a young boy called Connor and he's 13 years old and his mum has recently been diagnosed with a serious illness and she's undergoing treatment for it. Every night after midnight Connor is visited by a monster and basically this monster is very scary and very dangerous. He wants to find out the truth about everything and what's going on. This was such an emotional read everyone. Really, really emotional. If you're looking for emotion in books, definitely go to this one. It is really sad, just you really connect with everything and feel everything for the characters. I really loved the fairy tale elements in this book. I felt like they were really unique, really different. They added something just really special to the book, really enhanced the kind of tone and the mood. I also thought the writing style was perfect for what the book wanted to achieve. I thought it conveyed the themes quite well, but at the same time it was very simple and very beautiful. I felt like it didn't need any more description because it just worked so well as it was. This is definitely a book that will stick with me for a long, long time because of its themes, because of its beauty. I feel like it's a very universal YA book. I feel like it deals with a lot of emotions that people will feel. Even though we might not feel these emotions in the same circumstances as Connor, I feel like they're definitely very real emotions that people do deal with. So I thought it was a fantastic book, really, really enjoyable and it's definitely one that I would recommend. The second book that I read was A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens and this is basically the bind up of all of his Christmas stories and in this is A Christmas Carol, the one that I've read and I gave it a four out of five. This one's about Scrooge who basically hates Christmas, he's very bitter, very cynical, but then he's visited by the ghosts of Christmas past, present and Christmas yet to come and he actually changes, he learns lessons about charity, kindness and goodwill and becomes a much nicer man. I really thought the characterization was fantastic, I loved the development of Scrooge, the way in which he changed. I thought that was really fantastic. I also really loved the way in which the ghosts were kind of used in this book. They really were quite incredible, really unique, really different, really enhanced the plot. I was also pleasantly surprised by the writing style. I felt like it was very accessible for Charles Dickens. Sometimes he uses quite obscure language, but in this book I didn't think it was the case. I felt like it was quite accessible, very easy to read. The reason why I didn't give it any higher than a four was just because I didn't feel like it wowed me. And I think this might be because I've already seen a lot of film adaptations adaptations of it and I kind of knew the story beforehand. It didn't really shock me because of that. Maybe that's why I didn't enjoy it as much as I was hoping but it was still fantastic. It's a book that I will revisit next Christmas because it was just amazing and it's definitely a festive read that I would recommend. The third book that I read in December was Weird Things Customers Say in Bookshops by Jen Campbell and again I gave this one a four out of five as well. This book is a collection of funny and humorous stories and conversations from bookshops and basically a lot of the dialogues are between the customers and the booksellers but equally some of them are between the customers themselves and the bookseller has been listening in. It was so funny to read, it was absolutely hilarious. I just couldn't stop reading and relating to all of these, laughing my head off at times. It was just a fun, fun read. It was a really quick, easy read. Now I want to work in a bookshop more than ever before because seriously I want to get involved in stuff like this. I want to experience similar situations where customers ask really obscure and really strange awkward questions because I wouldn't know how to respond but it would just be quite hilarious. The fourth book that I read was my favourite book of the month. It is Ajax Penumbra 1969 by Robin Sloan. I gave this one a 4.5 out of 5. This is the prequel to Mr Penumbra's 24 hour bookstore and it's set in San Francisco in 1969. We get to find out about Mr Penumbra's backstory so we learn a lot more about him. We kind of find about this assignment that he was given where he had to go find the single remaining copy of a book. He wanders around San Francisco and finds a 24 hour bookstore that provides him with a lot of opportunities and help him to achieve his task. This is so bookish and really relatable. The characters are amazing. I really love Mr. Penumbra, but equally Claude and Corvina. I love the bookish nature of these characters, equally the bookish descriptions and the bookish quotes. It's all so bookish. I also really love the writing style, perfect balance between beautiful description and humorous dialogue. And also something that I found about the writing style really stood out to me was the use of present tense. I felt like this added something even more unusual, even more dynamic and weird in a way, but really good. 
And I never really pick up on stuff like this, but for some reason it really stood out to me, and I think this is a sign of a fantastic book. The only thing that stopped me from giving this a 5 out of 5 was the ending. I felt like it was just ever so slightly abrupt. Even though it ends in an appropriate place for where it continues in the main book, I felt like I wanted a few more pages for some reason. It just felt like there needed to be a little bit more, but I think in general a fantastic, fantastic book. You all need to read stuff by Robin Sloan. He's a fantastic author. The final book that I read in December was The Bookshop Book by Jen Campbell, and I gave this one a 4 out of 5. This is a non-fiction book about bookshops in different continents and basically it deals with a lot of interviews with different authors and different booksellers regarding their opinions and situations in bookshops, particularly independent bookshops. It talks about bookshops in places that you might not even imagine, like used car parks, disused railway stations, all of these really unexpected places. And I think it's really exciting for any book lover to read something like this. Of course it's very bookish. I love the anecdotes and the facts that we were given. I thought they were really intriguing. I always wanted to know more and more about these bookshops that were being explained. We definitely see the magic of bookshops in this book. We see the importance of books and the importance of selling books how having bookshops can actually affect people's lives in really extreme ways. I can definitely conclude that every bookshop has character and an individual story that no other bookshop has. Every bookshop is different. Also in this book there are some beautiful pictures as well as describing the bookshops we actually get to see some of them and they are so beautiful. I will try and find some now and they really just kind of add stuff. I think as a non-fiction book pictures really do enhance everything and you know, there's some here, for example, I don't know if you'll be able to see them well, but we kind of get really nice quality paper as well for these pictures, and really cool to see, you know, the different places. So everyone, now let's move on to my January to be read pile, and I'm really excited about January because my theme is going to be books about books. I don't always set themes, but I felt like this month it was appropriate just because I really love books about books. They went really well in 2014, and I can't wait to read more of them in 2015. I'm not exactly sure if I'll be able to get through all of the ones that I want to, just because I'm going to be quite busy in the first half of the month. I have some mock exams in school, so I need to revise for them, I need to do well. The first book that I'd like to start the year off with is The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield and this is of course a really bookish book and basically the character is living above a bookstore and she's been given this task to write someone's biography and I don't know a lot about it but it sounds really really mysterious and really gothic. I know there's actually a TV program of this and I saw a few trailers on YouTube and it looks really scary and really gothic, very atmospheric, not necessarily what I was expecting but I'm really excited for that. I'm really excited for the supernatural aspects of it as well and I feel like it's just going to be a really different kind of book about books. I'm not sure, I just kind of get the impression that it takes kind of a different approach but at the same time deals with a lot of books bookish stuff, so I'm really excited for this. And in my Christmas book haul, everyone seemed to be recommending that I read this first, so that is what I'm doing. The second book about books that I would like to read is The Air Affair by Jasper Ford, and this is a book dealing with the main character Thursday Next, who is a literary detective. In this book, Jane Eyre has gone missing, and Thursday Next needs to discover why and what the current situation is. I believe there are also quite a lot of references to Great Expectations by Charles Dickens, and that is a classic that I want to read this year, so it's probably going to persuade me to read that even sooner than I was planning. And the final book that I'm hoping to read this month is quite a long book. It's over 600 pages, so I'm not sure if I'll get to it all in January, but hopefully I'll be able to read most of it. It is Afterworlds by Scott Westerfeld. This is a YA book, and it's basically about a girl who's writing a novel in the month of November. We get to read about her life and her situations, the struggles she faces, but equally how she overcomes them as a writer. But we also get to read the actual novel that she's writing, and that really, really excites me because I think that it's really nice to see what someone is writing and kind of see two different styles. Also, I think it was in my Christmas book haul, Nerdy Book Lover pointed out that these are faces, and I didn't realise this until I looked closer, and that is like the coolest thing ever. I absolutely love this cover, I love the design, and the spine as well, the spine is beautiful, so dynamic and bold. So everyone, that is it for my December wrap-up and January to be read pile. I really hope you enjoyed. If you've read any of these books, please let me know down below in the comments, tell me what you thought of them, or equal if you're planning to read them in the future definitely let me know. Also, what are you planning to read in January? I would be really excited to find out. So thank you everyone for watching and I will see you all again in my next video.